make it yourselfers and carnivores and potential carnivores. I'm guessing that by now I have quite a bit of a mix of people who are coming to this channel and looking at these videos. I have my make it yourselfers from before and now that I have been posting about my healing on the carnivore diet, I'm getting a lot of feedback from people who have either tried carnivore or they're looking to try carnivore and so I thought I would address one of the issues that came up in a lot of comments after my last video. Now, the video that I made about trying the carnivore diet and how I have been on it for just over four months now, I talked at the end a little bit about how I wasn't losing weight. And at the time, I mentioned that I wasn't too upset about it because I was seeing so many other benefits. My skin is a lot clearer, I've been sleeping a lot better, I've had a lot more energy, I'm a lot more focused, my eczema, or eczema, which I also got called out for my pronunciation. Um, keep in mind that I live in Spain and I have been living here for over 20 years now and we speak Spanish at home. Uh, pretty much the only English that I get in is when I'm making these videos talking to a few of my friends online or talking with my mom back home online. Anyway, you say tomato, I say tomato, eczema, eczema, however you want to pronounce it, it's gone. But let's get back to the topic of the day, weight. When I started the carnivore diet on September 28th, 2022, I weighed 144 pounds. When I made my video four months later, I weighed around 146 pounds. And since I made that video, I went up to over 148 pounds. <laughs> so I haven't gone down. That said, for some strange reason, yesterday I was hungry all day. And because I'm in my luteal phase right before my period, I decided it was a good time to go along with, I'm not gonna say all of my cravings, I'm not craving sweets. I'm gonna go along and nourish my body and consider it the nourishing phase. At the beginning of your cycle, when your estrogen levels are rising and higher, those are the times when you can get away with more fasting. At least that's according to Dr. Mindy Peltz from Fast Like a Girl, which I haven't read yet, but I've followed a few of her interviews and posts online. On the other hand, after ovulation, when you go into your luteal phase and your estrogen levels fall and your progesterone levels rise, those are the times that you want to nourish your body more and your body is having these cravings for more food and possibly more sweets and more carbs because progesterone wants that and if you try to limit yourself too much in the later part of your cycle this can cause problems with sleep it can stress your adrenals it can lead to other problems so yesterday me being at the end of my cycle, I was hungry and I ate pretty much all day. I had a very fatty cut of steak for breakfast and I had a little bit of coffee with butter in it to go with that. Later on in the day when my son was hungry and I made him some sausages and a little bit of pork, I had a little bit of that. And I didn't think I would be hungry for dinner. But when my husband came home, I had been making some ribs in the crock pot. And I actually had quite a few of those. And I was sure that I was going to go up in weight today. And I wasn't upset about it because I knew not only do I tend to gain a little bit towards the end of my cycle right before my period, but I knew that eating more, it would make sense that I would gain a little bit of weight. I was actually surprised to find that I'd gone down a pound. So <laughs> I didn't know what to say about that. I had gone down from the 148 to 147.2 over the last few days. And this morning I was 146.2. So let's talk a little bit about the way my weight has been fluctuating since I started the carnivore diet. 
When I started, I actually did start to lose a few pounds. And when I was gonna make a video, I think about a month into it, I got down as low as 138.8. And I hadn't seen the 130s for a while and I was really happy about it and I was so excited. I had this goal of being around 130 pounds. And it all seemed to be going great until one cycle, I started going up at the end of the cycle and I got back up to about 141, which I figured nothing crazy, you know, it's my cycle and it'll come off as soon as my period's over, but it didn't. And then the next month, right before my cycle, I ended up getting up to 144. And that's about the time when I recorded the other video. I had been fluctuating around somewhere between 142 and 144 for several weeks when I made that video. And now, ever since, I've been fluctuating somewhere between 146 and 148 for quite some time now. Despite the fact that I'm not losing weight, I feel better about the way I look. My face doesn't feel as puffy or look as puffy. My abdomen is flatter. There is obviously fat there that needs to go, but I don't look puffy. I don't look inflamed. I don't look bloated. I've even been rocking leggings a lot lately, which is something I would have never done before. I just feel like I look more toned in general, despite the fact that I weigh more than when I started. I got a lot of comments with a lot of different tips and also the ideas of why I might not be losing weight. One of the thoughts was that when you start carnivore, you are exchanging fat for muscle. So at the very beginning, you can lose some weight just from when you bring down the inflammation, you release some of this puffiness that I'm talking about in my face, around my waist, around just the bloatedness. All of that puffiness, all of that liquid is what you lose at first. So I did go down at first, but then Pretty soon afterwards, I started to go back up and then I even went further up. But I don't feel like I look heavier than I did. And in fact, I have a friend who keeps saying, wow, you just keep losing weight. And I'm like, no, actually, I keep gaining weight. <laughs> Another thing that has been mentioned is that it could be due to bone density. And I thought that was a really interesting comment because when I talked to Sally Norton about the issue of oxalates, I had been eating a very high oxalate diet with lots of nuts and seeds, with celery, spinach, and all of these other high oxalate foods. And when I stopped those, I've been having some symptoms of oxalate dumping. Now, one of the things that oxalate does is it binds to calcium, and that's how it forms its calcium oxalate crystals. When it binds to calcium, it can cause calcification in the body. But if it doesn't have calcium, if you're not intaking enough calcium, it will look for other sources. So it can draw calcium out of your bones and that could lead to brittleness in your bones and less dense bones. When I got the comment that I was probably increasing bone density, I found that quite interesting because it is possible. I've been eating more dairy. I wasn't able to tolerate dairy before I started. I try to limit my dairy just because I feel that dairy can be a source of inflammation for some people and it can also lead to more cravings. It can lead to overeating if you aren't careful. And it is a higher carb carnivore food. When I do have dairy, I try to limit it. I try to use the harder, more aged cheeses. I do have butter. I like butter on my steak. I like butter on my eggs. I like butter in my coffee. <laughs> but I try to limit other sources of dairy. Even if I were able to find raw dairy here, I think that at my age and at the point I am in my carnivore journey, I don't think that it's something that is necessarily beneficial for me. 
I do use some whipping cream and I use it to make carnivore desserts for times like right now at the end of my luteal phase when I'm starting to have more cravings. I made myself some carnivore custard this week, which is basically a flan made without any sugar made with whipping cream, water, and eggs. And I can definitely make a video and a post about how to make that. It's delicious, I love it, and my husband really likes it. He eats it with some honey on his. And I can talk a little bit more about him because he's had some interesting developments with his semi-carnivore journey. But I'll save that for another video. But I try to limit the amount of those treats that I eat even though they are sugar free and I try to stick with mostly ruminant meats although yesterday for example I went down a pound and I had eaten quite a variety of everything. Another thing that comes up a lot is that perhaps your ratio of fats and proteins is wrong. Some people have it easy. They start on the carnivore lifestyle. They eat what Ever they want within all of these categories of meats and cheeses and fish and poultry and it just magically comes off. My husband wasn't fully following carnivore and he lost a few pounds. On the other hand, I commented about what I was doing with my mother and I suggested that to help some of her digestive issues that she tried to incorporate more animal-based foods and not feel like she needed to have all of these fruits and vegetables that we're told are so essential for us. And I realized that a lot of these healthy vegetables are was what's probably causing the inflammation in her gut and what was causing her issues. So she decided to give it a try and magically in a few months has already lost over 22 pounds, just instantly without a lot of effort, which I'm absolutely ecstatic about. I'm very happy for her and I think it's great. I think it's going to help increase her health and it's gonna prolong her life, which of course I absolutely love. She had the bittersweet problem of having to go out and buy more jeans. She had just recently gone through her closet and gotten rid of a lot of clothes thinking, I'm never gonna be able to wear these again. And now she's down four sizes, went down from a 12 to a six. While it's amazing to see that, and while I'm so happy with what's going on with the way I feel and everything else, it can be kind of frustrating to feel like you're the one person who is either not losing weight or who is gaining it. Then I got comments about perhaps I'm not losing any weight because I don't really have weight to lose. I'm at my ideal weight. And while I really appreciate the comments and I feel like it's a great compliment, I'm gonna have to disagree. Even though the scale is just a number, and I'm not going to say that I have any specific ideal weight, because I don't know what my ideal weight is for my new lifestyle. I had this idea that I had a goal of 130 pounds, but maybe 130 pounds isn't the ideal weight for me now with this way of eating. And it could be that I do have more bone density and more muscle, and I may need to lose more than that, and I may not need to lose that much. But what I will say is I do have areas that do need toning up. There is still excess fat on my body. I don't wanna be skinny, I don't like the skinny look that I got a few years back when I wanted to lose all of my pregnancy weight gain. And I basically starved myself and only ate vegetables. And my arms were quite skinny, my face was quite skinny. And as excited as I was at the time, to have gotten down to 127 pounds, which was the first time I had been that low since I was like 12. There's just something about the way I looked at that point that 
just doesn't jive with me. I like a more muscular look. So I've been doing more weight training. I've been trying to follow my body signals a lot more. So I've been eating more when I've been hungry and I have been taking a lot more breaks. Another comment I got led me to watch a video from another fellow carnivore. Someone told me to check out a video by Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. She was formerly vegan and had lost her period and decided to incorporate animal foods and has been following the carnivore diet for a while now. When I watched the video about her weight gain, she talked about how when she started the carnivore diet, after having been what she felt was malnourished for many years from her vegan diet, she was ravenously hungry all of the time. She followed her hunger signals and ate what she felt she needed to eat. When she was hungry, she ate. And she got her period back right away. And she was seeing so many other benefits that she also decided that she wasn't too bothered yet with a gain of 20 pounds. In her video, she stated that she found that the people who healed the quickest on the carnivore diet are the people who didn't try to starve themselves and who didn't try to use this as a weight loss diet. The people who are using this as a diet to help them heal from other past issues, those are the people who might actually see some weight gain at the beginning while they're healing. She saw it for six months, and then one day, she just wasn't as hungry anymore. And that's when her weight started to melt off. If she can stick with the carnivore diet through six months of gaining much more than what I've been gaining, and found healing and weight loss as she continued on her journey, I'm not going to get too upset about my little amount of weight gain. Another thing people have told me to try is to incorporate a stick of butter into my daily food consumption. I had myself seen videos of Dr. Bright talking about how a stick of butter could help improve our hormones and help with healing. So I was really increasing my butter consumption for a while. And I found that when I started doing that, that's when I started to gain weight. But I stopped eating the butter because I thought that's the one change I had made that had contributed to me starting to gain. And that's when I continued to gain. So looking back, I don't think that was the cause of my weight gain at the time. For now, I'm going to eat intuitively because that's one of the main benefits I found from the carnivore diet. You can actually trust your body signals so much more than what I was able to do before. I don't feel like I have to starve myself. Looking back, I thought I was being healthy. I thought I was eating all these healthy foods and I was fasting and that was healthy and I was doing all of these healthy things. But I really think that I was just starving myself. Just the ability to be able to eat as much food as I need, not trying to stuff myself, but just feeling comfortable and not feeling ravenously hungry all the time. If your metabolism is shot because you've been starving yourself for a long time, it may take a while for your body to adapt to actually being able to eat food. In making this video, I'm not trying to be any sort of expert and tell you what you should be doing to lose weight because obviously I haven't found the answer yet. My main goal for making this video is to just get a dialogue going, make you think, try to help those of you who are frustrated, feel that you aren't alone, and look at things from a different perspective. Take a look at some of the other good things that are going on. Try to focus on the good. Try not to get too hung up on weight. I know many of you have started the carnivore diet because your main goal was to lose weight. And if that's the case, then I understand even more why you are so frustrated. 
I think we need to realize this is not a weight loss diet. This is a lifestyle that many of us are trying to heal a lot of the bad that we've done from other ways of eating over the years. We are told to eat low fat foods. We are told to substitute lard and butter for margarine and seed oils. Then we started adding all of these healthy superfoods that were loaded with plant toxins. They were loaded with oxalates. They formed oxalate crystals that have caused us to get arthritis, that have caused us to have kidney stones, have caused us to have urinary tract infections and skin conditions. And all of this builds up over the years and it's gonna take a while for our body to clear. And we may need to clear that before our body focuses on getting rid of the extra weight. So if you find that you are following the carnivore diet and you are seeing some benefits, but you aren't losing weight, especially if you're just starting out, stick with it and see what happens. It's, it's hard to not give up, but make this focus about healing your body. If you're seeing other benefits, focus on that. Get your body healed. I still feel like I'm in a healing process. I still have days where I have oxalate dumping symptoms. They may not be as bad as they were at the beginning. I'm not breaking out into hives now. I'm not having the bouts of chills and all of these other strange symptoms. And even my skin on my ankle that was so bad at the beginning and Sadly, I never took pictures when my skin was at its worst. When I had the eczema on my ankle, I never took pictures when it was really, really bad. And the first pictures that I took, those I took a few weeks into the carnivore diet when I thought, wow, my skin is healing. This looks so much better than it did. When I look at those pictures, I think, wow, I've come a long way since then. But that was when I was actually excited about how my skin was clearing up. Since then, my skin is completely clear and it's amazing to me. And that in itself is such a powerful cue to me that things are better. I'm healthier. I have so much more energy. I'm so much more focused. So why on earth would I be worried about having gained three pounds? If you have 100 pounds to lose, and rather than lose any weight, you gain 10 pounds, you're going to be like, how is this girl at 147 pounds complaining about having gained three when she doesn't have as many to lose? But I just want you to see that you're not alone. We don't just automatically lose weight the second we cut all sugar out and start on a carnivore diet. Some of us might, but not all of us do. A lot of us have a lot of healing to do from the damage we've done over the years. I'll try to keep this from getting too long, but there's a few other points that I wanted to make before I sign off. One is that we need to look at the diet that I had before I started on this way of life. Before I started, I was probably very undernourished myself. Even though I thought I was eating all of these healthy foods, apart from the fact that the high oxalate foods that I was taking in blocked a lot of the absorption of the minerals and vitamins that they were supposedly giving me, I was eating very small amounts of food because I didn't want to continue to gain weight. In order to maintain or lose weight during the week, I was really only having one meal a day, and that was at night. And it was actually quite a small meal, generally packed with vegetables and maybe just a little bit of protein depending on the day. In fact, a lot of times during the week, I was very close to vegan. 
I had those matcha smoothies with coconut milk and chia seeds and my snack of celery sticks with almond butter. I think what's very common for those of us who don't lose weight when we start carnivore or even gain weight is we were probably all very undernourished when we started this. I went from eating basically one meal a day. I wasn't getting in a lot of calories. I wasn't getting in a lot of real nutrients, although I thought I was. And then when I switched from one day to the next to lots of meat, lots of eggs, if you really think about it, my body was used to living on such a small amount of real nutrients. And when I switched to a much more nutrient-dense way of eating, and I was actually eating a lot more during the day, it's actually quite amazing that I haven't been gaining more than I have. One other last comment that I would like to make is, well, I told you that I had had more energy and I've been getting more spring cleaning done. I've been going through a lot of these old closets filled with stuff and I found a very embarrassing, and I'm hesitant to share this, but I think when you come online trying to talk about your thoughts on a topic, you might as well be 100% real about it and say what you think. Sometimes you end up needing to share things that are a little bit embarrassing. And I found this journal. It's actually a book that I made myself when I wanted to lose some weight. I have information about my weight at certain points. Oh, I found a picture of what I looked like. These were my before pictures of me in my 20s trying to lose weight. And interestingly enough, this was 2004. So I was 29 at the time, and I weighed about 147 pounds at the time. So not too far off from what I weigh now. When I look at these pictures, I don't recognize this body. My body now at 48, at 146, 147 pounds, is nothing like my body in my 20s at 147 pounds. That's another thing to consider. Check your weight, check your inches. I was stupid enough to not measure myself before I started this. For now, I'm sticking with this. I'm gonna see what happens. I'm still not too concerned and overly focused on my weight. Although it is a concern for me and it is something that I will look into more in the future, especially as warmer weather comes and bikini season comes. For now, my main focus is on healing and I don't want to compromise that healing by trying to go to crazy lengths to lose weight. Now, if I find that I continue to gain and I don't feel like I'm getting any improvements in any other aspects, I may need to refocus on some of these other ideas, like to check and see if I need to increase my fat, decrease my fat. I'm just curious in the comments, I would love to hear what your thoughts are. I know some of you other carnivores are struggling and are having the same issues. We need to concentrate on healing, make this a way of life, make this sustainable and not get stressed out about it because when your stress levels are high, it's even harder to lose weight. So focus on the good, focus on what things are going well for you. I know that's easier said than done. I feel your frustration, I have it myself. I think that's where we need to be. And and don't go crazy uh, listening to people's advice saying, well, have two sticks of butter a day then. You know, that will help you lose weight. Just up your fats and lower your protein and that'll be good because you'll avoid gluconeogenesis and all of these crazy ideas are circling around the carnivore community. Maybe some of them are good. Maybe some of them aren't. There are There is the idea that especially women, especially as we get older, we do need to increase our fat consumption and that can really help heal our hormones, which in the long run could end up helping us lose weight. But I've also found that if I go overboard on my butter and I go overboard on some of these other things that I actually 
start to feel like I'm gaining fat. It's not that I think that fat makes you fat, but I think we also need to be realistic and not go crazy and go overboard. Just because you can have fat and lose weight doesn't mean that the more fat you eat, the more weight you'll lose. And it might actually be that way for some people, but it might not be that way for all of us. And I think we each need to find our sweet spot. Maybe following our body cues can help us reach that. We may need to do some healing first. So I'm not sure how long that's gonna take for me. I think it will take longer because I've been worried about what I ate since I was 12. I remember at 12 counting fat grams. I remember that I wasn't going to eat a hot dog because the hot dog had more grams of fat than what I should be eating in a day. So I've been killing my metabolism for over 30 years now. I have a lot of healing to do. So while some of these other carnivores healed pretty quickly, even if they were close to being type 2 diabetics, even if they lost their period, even if they had other issues that seemed a lot more severe than the problems I had, my problems have been building up for so many years now that I think it's going to take a while for me to fully heal. And I feel progress every day. I've had so much more energy. I'm getting these videos done. I'm updating old posts. I'm getting up new posts on the blog. And it's something I hadn't been able to do all year. And I am just so thankful for having found this way of living. I'm so excited to be able to share it with you. And yeah, I love hearing your comments. I haven't been able to get through them all because I've been trying to get so much done. I have so much energy, but there's only so many hours in the day. So I'm going through. I love your comments. I, you know, I would love to go through this with you and we can comment on our struggles and our successes together. I hope we can all find the best way to eat and heal for us and just live the best, healthiest, happiest, most energetic life we can. And I'm just looking forward to sharing all of that with you. So I hope you guys have a great day and until next time. Mm -hmm.